This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I have a new book of 11 round dishcloth patterns. They are all made with a graft. They are not cast on and then sewed together. They have an invisible seam. There really is one here somewhere and it's hard to find the invisible seam. If you are interested in purchasing the group of 11 patterns, the information about that is in the links to this video as well as the description for this video. Please keep in mind that there are three videos that are free on YouTube to help you succeed in making these round dishcloths. One of them just goes over the everyday techniques in them. They have the knit stitch, the purl stitch, increase, decrease, yarn over, and turning in the middle of the row. Most of you already know those techniques. There is a video on the provisional cast-ons, my two favorite ones, showing in detail how to do those. You need a provisional cast-on so that you can do an invisible graft. And then, of course, there is a video on how to do the invisible graft. I think these three videos give you techniques that are really useful for these, but there are also ways for you to tune up your general hand knitting skills. The stitches in the dishcloths are not complicated. The basic stitch for the dishcloths is garter stitch, which consists of knit stitch over and over. For knit stitch, you insert your needle in the front of the stitch. The front of the stitch is the part of the loop on the left needle that is closest to your face. And you just put it in this way so that both needles are inserted from bottom toward the top. And then you wind around that needle. It's a counterclockwise wind so that your, your yarn goes behind the needle first and then in between the needles. And when I say counterclockwise, what I mean is that if you were looking at the tip of the needle, you would see that the yarn goes counterclockwise. So this is the English method of knitting a knit stitch. And it is also called the throw method because I take my right hand and throw the yarn around the needle. Now there is also another method called the continental method or the pick method. For the English method, my yarn is on my right hand. For the continental method, my yarn is going to be on my left hand. I'm one of those people who knits both ways. It's very useful for different things. Like I like the English method for complicated lace and I like the continental method best for ribbing, for instance. But anyway, to do a knit stitch in continental, insert the needle in the same way, but you grab the yarn with that right needle and you just sort of pick it through. So some people call this picking, this method of knitting. What you want to do when you're learning to knit is practice until your work is even and not too tight. Really do try to relax and not have your work be too tight. Now at the end of the row you just turn and for the garter stitch, which is the main stitch in the dishcloth, you just knit in the other direction. But it's done in just the same way. Here I am doing continental knit stitches going back the other way. And to review, doing the English method to finish the row. Use whatever method you like. And that is the knit stitch. Now to demonstrate the purl stitch, I'm going to knit a few stitches first because there's a couple of important things that you need to know about the purl stitch. First of all, you insert the needle into the stitch differently 
then the knit stitch. You insert it this way. Instead of both needles going in the stitch this way, the needles come in from opposite directions. It's almost a back to front or a top to bottom sort of insert. And then to knit it English style, you still go counterclockwise around that right hand needle, but you knit it off forward. That is, after you wind around, which is the throw, you pull the old stitch on the right needle forward towards you and then off the right needle. This stitch has a different direction to it. Now, the yarn has to come from the front. And if you wanted to do a knit stitch next, the yarn has to come from the back. So when you change from purl to knit, you're constantly moving the yarn from the front to the back and the back to the front. So if my next stitch is a knit, I put my yarn in the back first. I don't put it in the back over the needle because that makes a hole. I go between the needles and put that yarn in the back. And then if my next stitch were a purl, I would put my yarn in the front first by going between the needles. I can't go outside the needle. That will make a hole. It'll make an extra loop that turns into a hole later. And so that is a purl. And there is a knit. And you see, I'm stopping to switch my yarn in between. Now if I'm a continental knitter and I'm doing a knit and then I'm doing a purl, please notice that I go behind the needle first and do that counterclockwise wrap on that needle. I do not go the short way like this. That results in twisted stitches. I have to go around that needle. And if I'm a continental knitter and I do a knit and then I do a purl, look how easy it is to switch that yarn from the back to the front. That's easy. So that is one of the advantages of being a picker. So I'll finish that row with a knit and then talk about the two decreases that are in the dishcloth patterns. The first decrease in the dishcloth patterns is knit two together. So instead of putting my needle in one loop, I put my needle in two loops. And then I wrap the needle as usual and knit both loops back off the top. Both the old loops go off the top toward the back and the needle comes out and I had two loops, now I only have one. And I'll show you that again. Knit two together. Go through two instead of one. And yeah, it's a little tight. And then wrap and then knit that through. And that was knit two together. And I'll knit another one or two. Just put a space in here. And then I'm going to do it continental style. Continental style is a little harder. Sometimes I give it a little help with my other hand. I admit it. But you put your needle through both, just as before, and you wrap and you knit two together. So there is knit two together. And that is really common in this dishcloth pattern. And there is another decrease. And it involves slipping a stitch. It's called pass the slip stitch over. So what you do is you slip a stitch. That is, put your needle in as if you're going to knit it and just transfer it from one needle to the other. So it was on the left needle and I slipped it to the right. So there you go, slip it like that. Then knit the next stitch. And then to pass the slipped stitch over, the pattern is going to say slip one, knit one, pass the slipped stitch over. This is the stitch I slipped. I lift it over the other stitch and off the needle to the back. And that results in a decrease that slants the other way. And there were two loops, now there's one. So that was the continental version. Let me change how I'm holding my yarn so I can do it with the English version. To do it English version, 
you slip a stitch. And if a pattern says slip a stitch, you typically do it this way. Once in a while, a pattern will say slip a stitch purlwise. Then you do it that way. The only difference is you would put the needle in purlwise. But we're just going to slip this stitch and knit a stitch and pass that slip stitch over. Okay? So that's the PSSO abbreviation is for the passing part of it. Now, we also have something called a yarn over. For yarn over, all you do is put the yarn in front when you're knitting, and then when you knit the next stitch, that makes an extra loop. And you'll very often in the dishcloth pattern see yarn over, and then slip one, and then knit one, and then pass the slip stitch over. So those are all the common things in the dish claws. Now there is one other thing that's not a stitch or an increase or a decrease that you'll see in these dish claws. I'm going to knit a couple rows and come back and show you that. And it is a short row. It involves turning but not at the end of a row, turning in the middle of a row. I put a couple of plain rows on because I want you to be able to see what turning in the middle of the row does. And this is a really easy technique and I'm first going to show you the most common way that you're going to see it in a lot of patterns, not just mine. Let's say that a pattern told you to knit seven stitches and then turn. So I'm knitted two, three, four, five, six, and seven stitches. And they want me to turn and leave these other five stitches on the left hand needle. So I do that. So now I have turned and left those stitches on the left hand needle. Now what you'll usually see is to slip one and then knit back. So on that second row they'll have you slip that first stitch. That is a very common direction. So it'll say something like slip one, knit to end. So there's another way that you'll see the slip stitch, not just for decreasing. So I did that, and I think you can see what it did was it created some extra length on this side, the beginnings of a triangle. On this side, I didn't knit these stitches when I turned. I left them, and then I knitted over and back on just these stitches. And you see it made this extra ridge and made my garter stitch a little longer. Now on some of mine, I have you turn and I don't even have you do a slip stitch. And I will demonstrate that. So let's say that this time I am going to knit, I don't know, six stitches. And I'm going to turn And I'm not going to slip anything. I'm just going to keep knitting like this. Because some of my patterns, I don't even have you slip. I just have you turn and knit back. That makes a little bigger hole. So it does the same thing as the other one. But it, you see this? It's going to be a bigger hole later on down in the pattern. It's going to, when that gets knitted, that, that hole will be more visible than the hole from the other time I did it. But that's a couple of ways that you would turn in the middle of the row. That covers the basic everyday hand knit techniques in the dishcloth book. There are two other videos. One of them shows the provisional cast on, which you need if you're going to get that invisible seam. And then the other one shows how to actually sew the seam 
in a finished dishcloth. Happy knitting!